When people think of a traditional story, there are usually heroes and villains, the good guys and the bad. Bad guys act as a foil to the hero. They push for something that we don't agree with, and while sometimes they may be relatable, what makes them a villain is that ultimately we want them to fail. And that's the value they provide, because as soon as we want them to fail, we're invested in seeing a particular outcome in the story. They invest us in the story. So what about villains in competition and esports? Well, I think they provide the same value. A villain invests you in an event or a match because you want to see them fail. Often people think of villains as doing some heinous act to make everyone hate them, but I'd argue there's different types of villains that achieve the same end goal, invest people into seeing them fail. So what are the types of villains? The trash talker is what a lot of people think of when they imagine a villain in a competition or esports. They're the player who is unafraid to call people out and let the world know how much better they are. This can be through playful banter in an interview. Being unabashedly honest about your opinions. Nah, he's a piece of trash who wouldn't win any games if he didn't play Protoss. Or crossing lines that we believe should not have been crossed. An important part of being a villainous trash talker is that you have to be good enough to back up your comments. As Corey Gaming puts it, a trash talker that never wins isn't a villain, they're a clown. Now there are varying degrees of trash talk. Saying you think someone is overhyped is one thing, but calling someone a racial slur will land you as a different type of villain than a trash talker. Whereas the trash talker might put someone else down for their competitive abilities, the heinous villain operates outside the realm of the competition and crosses lines. These are people who will engage with things like racial slurs, personal attacks, physical or mental abuse, breaking laws, or actively cheating in competition. Heinous villains are the kind of people we see in fictional stories as villains. While I can't argue with the fact that heinous villains can generate headlines, these kinds of villains push both participants and viewers out of the scene and alienate people. Ultimately, these villains generate attention by detracting from the actual competition rather than enhancing it. Whether it be sponsors not wanting their logos on screen as someone uses racial slurs in an interview, or other people in the scene not wanting to be involved with someone outed for sexually assaulting someone. The damage a heinous villain does to the scene is almost always far worse than the benefits they bring. Not all villains perform traditionally villainous acts, though. Sometimes, being so unbelievably dominant as a player can make you a villain. When someone hits an extreme level of dominance in a scene, it's natural after a while that people want to see the status quo broken. One of my favorite examples of this was in StarCraft II, a player named Serral went on an unprecedented 82-1 winning streak over the course of almost 350 days. During this winning streak, it became common for people to root against him despite him being one of the most honorable and well-mannered players around because he was too dominant. People either wanted to see someone new win for once or they wanted a closer competition instead of feeling like he'd already won the tournament before it began. Sometimes it's less the player and more the winning playstyle that's hated though and that is what makes you a villain. Winning with a style that is hated as being boring, cheap, or overpowered can get people actively rooting against you. Another popular example of this would be Hungrybox from Super Smash Bros. Melee, who is well known for playing an extremely campy and defensive style of Jigglypuff, but continued to win time and time again. Watch Hungrybox's face. You'll need his grass nose at one point. We got a chance for the ledge grab. <laughs> H-Fox likes oh. it. Dude, he can suicide with that one. He's good, yeah, that's, he's gotta be careful he's gotta with be that. Careful. That's all right. Oh my god. Now, if you're like me, you may have thought some of the examples made you want to see these players succeed, not fail. But that's an important point about this. Villainy is perspective-based, and one man's villain is another man's hero. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. Well, then you are lost! Everyone has their own lines about what they believe is okay and what isn't, so what may cross the line for some is totally reasonable to others. 
Where I stand is that I think there's room for lots of different types of villains in the esports scene. And I do think that they get people invested in seeing the outcome, which is a good thing. But I think the heinous villains do a lot more harm than good for the scene. To me, a villain should add to the competition rather than detract from it and have a mutual respect for the game and the competition at the end of the day, if not for each other. But what do you think? Are there types of villains that I haven't really covered in this video? And where do you draw the line on what villainy you'd like to see in the scene? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy seeing videos like this or have video topics you'd like to see me cover in this format, consider supporting me on Ko-Fi and suggesting topics like these great folks and Eric the Man 10. Until next time.